Hi, I'm Chad from Chad DIY and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we have da -da -da -da, a brand new laser from Xtool. Now, if you're familiar with the Xtool lineup, this might look a little familiar. This is the F1 Ultra. Now, this kind of shares some similarities with the original F1, but there's a lot of differences that definitely need to be mentioned. First off, you have the world's first 20 watt diode laser as well as a 20 watt fiber laser. Now to me, this really is the best of both worlds scenario where you have that nice and powerful diode laser as well as that awesome 20 watt fiber laser. Now that fiber laser is going to be incredible for metals. It's going to be able to emboss things where you're not just scratching the surface on, on items, but you're also really able to dig deep in those engraving situations. Now in this video, I plan to kind of showcase some of the features of this F1 Ultra. Well, we will do a few sample testings, but really with my channel, you can see a, a, all this kind of footage of you know laser engraving, whether it be leather, metal, wood, it's gonna do a great job on that. But my channel, I like to kind of focus in on certain aspects of the machine. So in today's video, I'm planning on doing kind of a brief overview of the machine as well as doing a few test engravings. But my plan for this is not just a one kind of video quick showcase. To me, a machine like this is, I'm gonna to have to do a series of de dedicated videos to cer certain aspects of this machine. Now what I mean by that is, it's easy just to go through real quick metal, wood, all these different materials, and you kind of end there. But what I think is helpful for the audience is I've had videos with other X tools where let's say I focus just on doing the rotary attachment. That's the whole video because what I feel like the audience really wants to see is they have a specific problem and they want to know how to use that their machine to solve that problem. So that's what I hope to focus on more in future videos. But right now we're going to go through the uh, overview of this. So let's get started. Now, one of the first things I think is very important to focus on on this F1 Ultra is to look at what a regular F1 looks like. So we'll get the screen out of the way. There is a huge size difference between the F1 Ultra and the F1. Now, the F1 is really told it to be a portable machine, which it definitely is. It comes with a, with a handle here. And the, the style of them are very similar. You're going to have your protective slide case for both of them like that but really as you can see the size difference is i mean it, it's quite quite impressive to see how big this machine is compared to the original f1 now i'm comparing these two machines kind of side by side just looking at them one thing i'll mention is i love my f1 it's the most used uh, laser engraver i have in my shop uh, i have a bunch of x tools other brands but the f1 the smallest i have is definitely the most used and at first when I got it, I didn't think it, that would be the case. I have the P2 and the S1 as well. But just for the engraving, which I do more than cutting, the F1 is definitely my go-to. So I feel like the F1 Ultra was probably every complaint X2 got about the F1. Hey, we want a camera. We want more power. We want the fiber where we can go deeper into metal, uh, the size of it, everything that they complain about the F1. That is why they created the F1 Ultra. With that being said, now talking about the two different machines, kind of what audience they are geared towards. Now this, I would say the F1 Ultra is definitely geared towards more the business side of things. It's probably getting to that price point and all the features. You're kind of usually getting a little bit beyond just the hobbyist. So a machine like this is going to be for more of the serious, hey, I want to make money off this machine. I'm going to use it for a business. I need the speed, the camera, the power, all that. And that's what's the F1 Ultra is going to shine. Now the F1, the original, it's great. I know a ton of people that they'll bring it to craft shows. It's so portable. You can engrave things uh, right there. So definitely can be business minded, but it's also at a price point where uh, for hobby use, you can get into this, um, not break the bank. So kind of two different, two different trains of thought on that. But now we're going to kind of kick this F1 to the side for now and focus on this F1 Ultra. All right, so one of the first features you're going to notice right away that's different about this F1 Ultra is it has a touch screen. Now, I think this is a really cool add-on to do. You can uh, store files in there as well as really convenient to kind of goes up and down. So when you're trying to autofocus, kind of there's there's going to be two your two lasers are going to kind of line up um, 
with a couple of different colors there. So you want them together when you're trying to focus on, on an item. Also has a framing button and then a stop and go button basically on the bottom. So really cool feature. I've never, uh, none of the X tools have had this before, having that touch screen. So yeah, I'm excited. I, I don't know, kind of cool tech, I guess, kind of nerd out on that touch screen, but excited to have that. I think it's going to make it uh, just that much more convenient when you're getting a project started. All right, now we'll jump over to the side of the machine. Uh, you have a few ports, USB port there. Uh, you're going to have your computer port. So a lot of people just run this once they get it set up initially. You're going to initially have to go through USB and then you can switch it over to Wi-Fi. And so then you don't have to be tethered with your laptop. Works really well doing that with all the uh, X-Tool machines. But for initially at least, or if you just prefer always using that USB port uh, on your computer, you can do it right there. It also has very convenient emergency stop. So you hit that button, everything's gonna shut down immediately. So, and you just kind of twist it to pop it open and you can start it back up. And there you go. All right, so we flip around, move to the back machine. One thing you're gonna notice right away, it's got the three inch uh, exhaust port. Now the F1 has, I think it's two inch. I guess I'm not even sure what size it is for sure. Uh, but it's definitely smaller. You're gonna use that smaller fume extraction for this. This one's gonna take the big fume extraction if you choose to use it that way, or you can exhaust out a window, window of course. But this is gonna be kind of what the S1 and the P2 are set up for. So just be aware of that. Uh, I think that's great actually. I think a, a lot of people do get converters to go up to four inch, four inch and six inch are more of a, a standard. So the bigger the better as far as getting those fumes out. But especially with engraving for the most part, I feel like there's less fumes that I run into compared to cutting acrylic or wood or whatever, you uh, can really produce some fumes. So, I think that's plenty adequate. So that's, uh, I guess, a, a plus is to have that upsize compared to that original F1 um, exhaust port. You're also gonna have your plug-in for your touch screen in the back here. You're actually gonna have your, I think they, do they call these uh, doggles? I don't know, toggles, whatever. Uh, basically, it's uh, like a key. So you get a couple of these in the package. You have to put that in. It's not gonna run if you don't put that in. So that's just kind of a, I don't know, I guess a key, that's how a lot of companies do that instead of the actual key, they, they do that. Make sure uh, if, if you don't want anyone else using it, you just pull that out and uh, make sure not to lose it. So <laughs> important with that. But also then you have, you're gonna have the power supply, you got fire expression, uh, suppression, and as well as you can get optional foot pedal as well. So for starting, stopping. And the power here, I gotta say, this is a beefy power brick here. Uh, so overall, this machine, everything, it's, it's heavy. So it's not uh, it's something you're definitely just gonna wanna set up on a desktop or whatever, kinda leave it there. It's not obviously you can carry it around to some extent, but I, it's, it's a size and a weight where you kinda want it stationary. You're gonna put it where it's gonna be and you're probably gonna leave it there for the most part. All right, now we got it back flipped around facing forward. Now it's gonna come, so you flip up this, uh, the protective shield there is going to come with a lens cover, kind of a black cap there, so you can pop that off. So make sure you do that or else it will not work well. Also for the size of this, they probably, I'm sure, uh, have a very specific millimeters for engraving size, but sometimes I just like to throw uh, a little ruler on here and see exactly what, roughly what we got. So we got, looks like the bill plate's just over nine inches wide and a little over 10 inches long. So I know uh, you can find out the exact specs in the millimeters and convert them if you use, if you're, if you're not on the metric system, I guess. So just a good reference for, uh, for the size of this thing. And actually, I'm gonna grab, uh, we'll, we'll try that regular F1, the build plate, and we'll just kind of see the difference right there. All right, so here's that F1 uh, plate that pops out. And as you can see, you could get at least about four of those things on this build plate. So yeah, quite a bit difference. The one thing about the original F1 is this pops out so you can hold it up to things like a basketball or whatever. So uh, one, one positive, I guess, about the smaller machine is it does have this removable plate. But overall, yeah, you're getting uh, about four times the size it looks like for this build plate compared to that F1. All right, and that's kind of a quick overview of the machine. One other thing I'd like to mention is this touchscreen. Uh, when you first started up, 
it's going to update for the firmware. So as soon as I plugged in the machine, it's updating the firmware. That took a few minutes. But then once I got the right software used with this machine, I had to then update the firmware once again. So I'm not sure exactly how that works initially with the updating the firmware right out of the box before the computer is actually connected. But uh, just something to note, the right version of the software, get the firmware all squared away and you're gonna be good to go. So with that being said, Let's do, uh, do a few test runs here and kind of see how this F1 Ultra works. All right, so if you can see me behind this whole setup, I think we're ready to try a few uh, test engravings out. Now I always like to kind of use my logo. That's kind of one of my first things to go through. So I have uh, the fume extractor all set up. Uh, I'll kind of turn that on when we're getting ready to go. Now I'm just doing a tiny little logo, so it's not gonna create a ton of fumes, but let's uh, jump over the software side of things and we'll kind of look at getting it set up using that camera and we'll start off with that. All right, so we're in the Xtool software. I already have my image imported there, so we can kind of size that, whatever. Uh, let's first take a new image. We'll insert this uh, little business card here, get that squared up, and we'll refresh that snapshot. And there it is. All right, so that's our business card. We'll get it nice and, yeah, it's nice and square there. So we're just gonna kind of line this up. No, I'm gonna kind of tweak it. It could be a little bit more square. So I'm gonna retake that image real fast, go up to processing. All right, retake that. All right, so now we're a little, a little better aligned there. So now with my image, I can kind of get that center there. Now I like to use the arrow keys. A little trick that you might not realize to easier than using the mouse. So we're going to kind of get that squared up there. Do that easy set panel. We got power range, 53, dot duration, everything, you know, and that, that's one of the biggest things about uh, engraving really is, is getting those settings uh, right. But I think that's good enough to to try at least here. So we'll see how it goes. We're gonna hit processing here. Put that enclosure down. All right, and it's ready to start now. Where's my little button there? It's from the laptop. All right, we can hit the start button and it should go. And these things are lightning fast. I'm gonna switch the camera around and show you how it does. You can see the fumes just uh, going right into that fume extractor working great. All right. Oh, oh, how nice is that? Let's kind of, hopefully that camera picks it up just fine. Yeah, turned out really nice. All right, so we'll try one more thing. We'll try the slate coaster. Now this time I'm gonna use, instead of that uh, dial laser, I'm gonna use the fiber laser. Now I tried checking Xtool's website. Now they have a great website as far as finding material settings. So you can choose your laser cutter on xtool.com and you can go to what material you're using and they'll give you uh, recommendations for settings as far as uh, speed and uh, power and everything. So I checked that they don't have the F1 Ultra as of as of date right now, as of today, they don't have that. So hopefully soon they'll have some material settings updated. So right now I'm kind of just guessing a lot of this stuff. And so that's why I kind of as an early adopter of a machine like this, I'm hoping to kind of work out the kinks and hopefully uh, be able in future videos show you, hey, what's working for the different materials for the settings. So uh, look forward to that in different uh, upcoming videos. But yeah, we'll try the slate. We'll try to some settings and see how it goes. All right, so pretty pleased how that slate coaster turned out. Uh, next time, probably up that power a little bit more, but overall, just uh, there's gonna be a lot of trial and error with this machine, just working on those settings, and hopefully uh, I can really update you in the future as far as what's working for me. So overall impressions of the F1 Ultra, love it so far, that 
camera is going to be really nice to really speed things up, the extra power. I mean, there's really nothing not to like. Like I mentioned before, they basically all the complaints on the F1, they fixed it, I think, in my mind with the F1 Ultra. So really excited for that. If you are interested in this machine at all, I will provide my affiliate link. I'll just really appreciate if you are going to buy this machine anyways, I'll provide that link. It'll give you the best price. And since it's just launching now, this usually is always going to be the best price uh, right when it launches. So if you're uh, interested in that, really appreciate when you use those affiliate links and it really helps out the channel. So if you have any questions on this machine at all, please leave them in that comment section below. I'll get back to you. And as always, I'm Chad from Chad DIY and we'll see you on the next one.